Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Englewood, New Jersey. Yeah. I'd like to start uh, today's uh, program by asking Rabbi Ganak and Reverend Taylor, respectively, to offer us a few words of greeting and invocation. Thank you. Rabbi? Yeah, they were from the Nine Eleven. We entered a new dangerous epoch. We will be called upon, in John Kennedy's words, to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle. It's a struggle against terror and unbridled hatred. First, we pray for the safety of our servicemen and women. They are defending not only American interests but American values. The long gray line has never failed us said Douglas MacArthur. Were we to do so a million ghosts in olive drab, in brown khaki, in blue and gray, would rise up from their white crosses, thundering these magic words, duty, honor, country. <coughs> Senator Hillary Clinton's entire life has been animated by these three words, duty, honor, country. In these difficult times, we need leaders possessed of a sense of purpose, resolve, fairness, and devotion. Hillary is such a leader of whom we can be just and proud. The ancient Roman philosopher Seneca once observed, if one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favorable. May America always be blessed with leaders like Senator Clinton, so that it may always be guided with favorable winds at its back to its home port, freedom and equality. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and to share with Michael Wiles and Hillary Clinton in this particular platform. As we pray, we do pray for our nation, our international affairs. We ask that you would give peace and protection to our men and women who are yes. defending this country even now. Yes. We pray for the safety of both the citizens of Iraq and the citizens of the USA. We ask your mercy for those who are innocent, who may be caught in the crossfire. We pray now for this occasion as we've gathered from all walks of life to greet one that we revered over these years. We pray for her. We thank you for Michael who called this assembly together. <coughs> and bless our time together and allow it to be a fruitful one. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Rabbi Gene, Reverend Taylor, for gracing us with your presence today. Am I hearing it? <laughs> Anybody know? Pardon? Okay. Sorry for the sound. I welcome not only my friends and Democratic leaders in attendance, but especially the spiritual leaders who, along with Rabbi Ganak and Reverend Taylor, have co-chaired this event on behalf of Senator Clinton. And if you indulge me, I'd like to make a special acknowledgement to my partner in life, my wife Amy. Yes. My father and law partner, Leon Wilds. And my four children, Raquel, Josh, Lauren, and Jacqueline. I can go on about us, but today isn't about us. Today is about Senator Hillary Rodden Clinton. Senator Clinton, known to be the most famous female political leader in the world. Because Hillary Clinton has traveled the world bringing hope to millions, and she has traveled here today as a senator, bringing the people of our city an opportunity to play not only a small part in her historic career, but raising the better for our profile throughout the state and nation. Hillary Clinton is best known as our former, former First Lady, but I, I will readily admit in my own political career as a councilman and in this year, as Englewood's Democratic Organization choice for mayor, no leader can effectively lead alone. My wife Amy may not hold the title nor appear on the ballot, but she is more than a 50% partner in everything and anything I have accomplished in politics and for that matter in life. In fact, what attests to this, ladies and gentlemen, is that in recent days, as those signs 
adorn people's lawns, people often wonder if Wilds for Mayor actually is my wife, Amy. <laughs> we know this type of partnership was true of the Clintons. In what was one of the most successful presidential administrations in American history. There are those who there are those who overlook that because they do not see eye to eye with everything that Senator Clinton has done and is doing in the decisions she has to make in a world that now offers very few painless choices. However, I ask that all of us to remember in the words issued by the late Senator Robert Kennedy, whose Senate seat Senator Clinton holds today, he often said, it is better to light a candle than curse the darkness. Mm -hmm. And while our world will never be free of darkness, leaders like Senator Clinton offer us indeed a ray of light. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Clinton administration was the last democratic administration. It brought America the greatest economic expansion in history, more job growth, a longer sustained peace, a substantial stride in social progress towards better health care, child care, and human and civil rights. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that none of these accomplishments would have been made had not Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton been there by his side. Oh, that's right. That's right. passion that embodies Senator Clinton because I've had the opportunity to work with her in her capacity as a New York Senator on cases that I have fought as an attorney, fighting for Kwame James, the young man who prevented the shoe bomber attack on the American Airlines flight in 2001, and a host of other World Trade Center survivors, including Vasily Rijov that's here with his children today. He lost his wife and they, their dear mother, in the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. Yet whether it was about working for the benefit of millions, or for just a few at a time, what is most remarkable about Hillary Rodham Clinton is that what are nearly unimaginable accomplishments for most of us are yet just the beginning for her. She went from being First Lady of Arkansas to being First Lady of the United States to becoming the first First Lady to be elected to public office in her own right before leaving the White House. And few of us would be surprised, ladies and gentlemen, if she were not a contender in the years to come in the years ahead in official capacity. <laughs> those of us here, those of us here, we know we are participating in what is undoubtedly just the beginning of Hillary Clinton's yeah. political career of firsts on state, national, and with God's help, international levels. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce the United States Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton. <laughs> Just delighted to be here in Englewood, and I'm sorry that some of you have missed church. <laughs> we went early for another time. Uh, Stop the war, 2004. I know. One of the great things about our country is our willingness to debate and to have differences of opinion, which I deeply respect. I want to thank Rabbi Ganak, a longtime friend of mine, for being here and for his very kind words. I also want to thank Reverend Taylor. Thank you, Reverend Taylor, for your uh, very moving prayer and for your uh, leadership in this community. when uh, Reverend Taylor's church has built its new expansion. It is the most important work that we can do. You know, as Senator Robert Kennedy once said, on this earth, God's work is our own. And that's not only for those who are uh, rabbis and ministers and priests, it is for all of us to do it to the best of our human ability. I also want to thank my friend Michael Wilds for this wonderful event this morning, and I'm delighted that his wife Amy and his four children and his father and his father-in-law and uh, the entire family are here. Uh, they, well, they vote all except for the kids, but they'll work hard, I can tell that. Uh, I know that uh, Michael is uh, running a very strong race for mayor here. So far, no Democratic opposition, which uh, is always a good sign. And I hope that I will see him elected mayor, and then we'll see what happens after that. Yeah. 